Hello, beautiful people. It's your favorite freedom and financial life coach, Coach Star with organized-chaos with a K.com and author of the book Live Freely, Freedom to Work Whenever, Wherever. And welcome to an episode, another episode of Passport and Portfolios. Today I have a question for you. Are you free? Right? So answer the question in the comment section below. Also, when you come into the space, type in hashtag IAW. That stands for I am wealth because we are creating a mindset and our intentions for creating wealth and prosperity. Today, I have a special guest joining me. His name is Mr. Kenrick with Country Boy Travels 206. And today he's going to today we're going to talk about and he's also going to share what freedom means to him how he lives freely and this new journey that he's embarking on to travel to all 206 countries and territories i am intrigued right so let's get started <laughs> now i gotta figure out how to add them <laughs> hi i am valerie foster thank you so much for joining the live today we got some good stuff for you today um let's see uh invite all right we're gonna wait for mr country hi hello how you doing can you hear me I i'm doing well. awesome how are me? you yes i can hear you oh my god that background is amazing you have to tell us where you are all right, I am here in Carousel here. Let me flip it around real quick. In fact, I'm sitting backwards just so you guys can see the background. Normally, I'm sitting oh the God. other way oh. as, as I'm sitting there writing and stuff. I'm so I, I'm here in Carousel. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> we, it is an a, a island, um, well, one of the territories of Netherlands. Uh, they call it the ABC Islands down here. So I'm on one. Um, I'll end up probably visiting all three while I'm here. But I'm just kind of starting here and, you know, just getting settled. And um, I'll make sure I stay to the left so that y'all can still see in the background. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about yourself and this journey that you're on to travel to all 206 countries and territories. All right, so everybody, uh, my name is Kenrick Brooks. Uh, everybody just calls me Kenny. It, it's kind of a name that's grown on me over the last couple of years. Um, I used to be in the military. I served in the military for 20 years. I also, um, after leaving the military, I worked in the private sector for about two years uh, before kind of venturing out uh, on my own. And when I left um, the private sector, my boss had asked me, what am I going to do whenever, uh, when I leave? And I just told him at the time, I was like, well, I'm going to just travel for a little while and we'll kind of see where it goes from there. And that was 2018, and I'm still on this journey to traveling, and um, that's what I how I made up in my mind to travel to all 206 countries. Oh wow! So how many countries have you been to thus far? So if you just count the countries, uh, we're at 43. If you include like the territories. Then I think I'm around 46 or 47 um, currently. Um, if you add these two that I'll, I'll be going to um, next week, it'd be um, about 48 or 49 or so. Wow, that is phenomenal. I think I'm on country 21. I think that's, I'm trying to be like you when I grow up, right? Well, so I mean, 21 came, is a lot. <laughs> it, it is. Like, and I've learned so much with traveling and exploring the world. Like, it has definitely, it definitely has restored my faith in 
humanity and the ability for me to do the impossible because there was a time in my life where I wouldn't even get on a plane because of fear. I let fear stop me from doing a lot of things. But once I got on my first flight at the age of 28, I have been traveling <laughs> ever since, right? So before I came into the live, to, before I invited you into the live today, I asked the listeners to tell me, uh, you know, are you free? And what does freedom, what does freedom mean to you? So when I, um, when I, when we, when we first started thinking about this, I went into Webster and I looked up, you know, freedom. And I found out that, you know, freedom is the power or right to act or speak or think um, as one wants, the power of self-determination uh, attributed to the will, the quality of being independent and um, choosing your own fate um, or just being unrestricted in something. So for me, uh, I take that definition and I would say that freedom is just the ability to um, self be self-determined in your life. I, I, I've always told my sons, um, I have a 22-year-old and my youngest son, he'll be 20 um, here soon. I've wow. always told him. You look like you're in your late 20s or early 30s. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess that's just good genes. Good yes. genes. Like some crack. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, but I always told my son, you know, whatever you want to be in life, you know, if you want to work at McDonald's, you know, you just got to kind of live a McDonald's lifestyle. Or if you want to work hard and, um, you know, have a lo lot of money, then that's the option too. Um, but as I'm beginning to um, just reflect even on that statement, um, that freedom of self-determination, I think is where I'm kind of really settling in on. Um, as you being able to determine um, where you want to be, where you want to go. And if you're not comfortable with that, then just that ability to change, that ability and freedom to to know that whatever situation you're in right now, it doesn't determine who you're going to be in the future. It's not going to determine who, um, what you want to do or, um, and just like in my case, um, I, I mean, I was making a lot of money you know, living the quote unquote American dream. But uh, the more and more I reflect on it, um, I don't think that I was free as I want to be or as free mm. as I am today. Um, I equate it to like, you know, when you're growing up and you try to get out of your mom's house and stuff and what, that first house, that first apartment <laughs> or whatever it is, you really think that you are free. You're, mm -hmm. you're running around, you're like, hey, yeah, I, I'm free. I could do whatever I want and everything. And then life come along and then those bills start to come mm -hmm. in and, and you get an attitude adjustment and then you'd be like, okay, I'm not as free as uh, I thought. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, some, some people, freedom is making six figures. Some people, freedom is quality time with their family. Um, but mine is really, you know, just the opportunity to just make my own choices without having to worry, without having to um, stress about um, um, anything. Uh, there's a quote in the Bible that talks about take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I can say over the last two years that it has been my philosophy and that more and more each day I am honing in on just experiencing now, being in the now, being in the, you know, immediate presence, um, you know, with family, with friends, even with work, 
because I, I do own my own business. I own a travel business. And, you know, sometimes we, even in owning your own business, you start thinking so much about the future, thinking about, well, I need to get this program in place. I need to get this in place. I need to do all this wonderful good stuff that we sometimes forget that, you know, we we need to just focus on the now, even in our businesses. Um, and that to me, I guess, is where I'm headed as far as that freedom, that, that freedom to not even worry about stuff, just to focus on whatever is right there in front of me and just putting all my energy and my care um, into that one particular thing, just like this conversation. It doesn't matter who else is around me, no matter what else is going on, you know, it's just us um, engaging. And what I found out is that um, it opens, it opens up your mind, but then I think I've learned to listen a lot better. Mm. Like through this freedom. That. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I like what you said about like you're literally living the definition of freedom, right? And that was the motivation for me for my book, Live Freely, Freedom to Work whenever, wherever, you know, I call it my life changing guide of how you can create financial and location independence. Because really, for me, my definition of freedom is freedom of expression, being able to do whatever I want, whenever I want, without restriction, right. And I'm glad that we are able to have this conversation, because I think it's important for rep for representation, right? Representation matters. It's important that we share our stories to empower others who may want more time and freedom in their life, but they're not really sure, well, how do I approach that? How do I, you know, just for you, for example, how, how did you leave a six figure job and say, okay, I'm going to just leave this and then I'm going to go and do what I love to do whenever, to do whatever I want, whenever I want. How were you able to transition into that? So it, it, it didn't start out like that. It, it really did. I, uh, I don't want people to look at me now and say, oh, man, I got the um, dream life and all this other stuff. That I mean, that took years and years of preparation. Um, I was married before. I was married for about, what, 12 years. And wow. I've been divorced for about 12 years also. Um, there's one thing that I learned from that experiences that whenever I got divorced I was like financially strapped I was I, I was hurting um if, if you ever seen hurt in a dictionary my face would have probably <laughs> came up <laughs> uh financially and I and I realized then that you know we you, you know I that I had to make better choices with my finances I had to make better choices um with just how I manage the income that I get. And that's why I, I gave that lesson to my sons is that, you know, you only, you only got what you got coming in and either you're going to do one or two things, go out and make more, create more money, or, you know, you learn to live within the means that you have. And I realized that just being debt free um, was just the way to go. And I, and I, from that point, my whole focus was, hey, how do I get debt free? How do I live uh, as close to debt free or debt free as possible? And, you know, I did it. And and that's what enabled me to walk away from that six figure job is just to say, hey, I, you know, I, I've managed my money well. I've done a good job up until this point. You know, let's let's take a chance on me. You know, I have ideas. I have things that I want to do. I have, um, you know, goals and dreams and aspirations. And so I said, hey, I'm going to take a chance on me. And I've been bending on myself ever since. You know, I, I tell people, don't don't ever count me out. If you want to bet against something, don't bet against me. Right. Bet against the other guy. Count me in. <laughs> <laughs> you got to bet against the other guy. Um, and, and, and that's what kind of led me even to start my own business and create, you know, my own um, way of life. Um, I was at a travel show just um, this last weekend and 
there was a marketing expert um, or that came up or somebody that said that they did marketing and they were, you know, kind of critiquing my, um, my, my, my booth and everything there. And I kind of, kind of just kind of looked at them and I was just like, look, I'm, I'm two years in. Think about this. I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking 20 years, 30 years down the line. I don't, I don't need to have it all together right now. You know, I, you, you just got to progress. And the same lesson that I learned from getting out of debt, the same lessons that I'm um, instilling into um, building my wealth is, hey, never despise small beginnings. Slow, slow steps is still progress. And as long as we're living, as long as we're evolving, as long as we're making progress, then and to our goals, you know, if we're only making progress to somebody else's goal. And some people are built for that. Like some people, they just want to be a helper to other people, which is fine. You know, find somebody, find a company, find an organization that you can join in and you can be that help meet to that organization, that person or whatever. And then other people, you know, have visions and, you know, they want to see those visions feel and, you know, it just, know that it just takes time sometimes you know you can't you can't rush greatness you know it's oh i love built, that <laughs> you gotta it's, it's a marathon of, yeah it's a marathon. <laughs> it nobody, is definitely... goes the, <laughs> nobody goes to the gym one day and just be like all right i don't worked out one time and oh man I, I should have all these muscles and stuff like that no you go in and you work you got to eat right. You got to manage your diet. You got to manage so many things and to see that progress. And then, you know, two, three, four years down the line, if you're consistent with it, and you and, and I think that that's important, especially to be free, is consistency. Mm. As long as you're consistent with whatever you're doing and whatever you're believing, then that, that freedom comes. That I freedom that. comes. That that goal is gonna happen. It just you you gotta be patient. I love that. Yeah. I was just getting ready to ask you um, what advice you would give someone who's looking to escape the nine to five, pursue their passions, and not worry about money. I think you hit the nail on the head when you say be patient and 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 have like consistency. Believe in yourself and your vision that you have, and then just you know bet on yourself. Like I absolutely. Yeah. Um, I love that. So is there like, and, and I was going to speak to about when you said about going to the gym, right? Because I always tell people, and this is a chapter in my book too, like um, knowing is not enough, right? Knowing is only half the battle. I used to watch the G.I. Joe um, cartoon, kind of telling my age, age of myself, and knowing mm -hmm. is half the battle, right? But applied knowledge is, a, is power. If knowing was enough, we will all have six packs and be billionaires, right? There's a quote. I can't remember who said the <laughs> quote. But if that was the case, we'll be rich and living our, and just looking fabulous, right? But knowing is not enough. You definitely have to apply the knowledge, like what we're sharing with you here today. You have to apply the knowledge that you learn to your life, to your goals, that template, and then make, I always say just make it happen, right? So I think that's yeah. very important. Is there a, um, a book? your favorite book or motivational quote or something that like inspires you when it comes to like personal finance or financial freedom or travel is there a, a book or motivation or podcast that you Ooh. like to listen to or read <laughs> so there there's a, a couple of things okay well, I'm, 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 I'm gonna give two books right off the bat okay i got my pen uh <laughs> I don't know. I, I read this book a long time, and I've read it maybe two or three times. Uh, but the title of alone should tell you just kind of the story behind the book. Okay. Uh, and it's called Breaking All the Rules. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Breaking, I'm writing that down, All the Rules. <laughs> and, and, and the reason why I like that book so much is because it is um, – it it it, it kind of gets you out of that norm that this is the way it has to be. Now, mm -hmm. coming coming out of the military, being a Virgo, whole nine yards. And I read this <laughs> I, I read this book when I was in the military, um, okay. and 
And so when, when I was in the military, I was one of those guys that, that always tried to think out of the box. But of course we did, we had like rules for everything. There was a rule for every single thing. And what I challenged myself even then and even more so now is that, yeah, there's rules for everything, but we can always create rules. Who defines the rules? Who sets those rules? Just because you did it one way doesn't mean that um, I had a particular outcome that may have not been the right timing or the right person or the right situation. So for me, I think that I um, challenge myself all the time to say, okay, well, this is normal to everybody else, but that doesn't mean that it has to be normal to me. So I'm going to break that rule and try something new, try something different, um, go out there and, um, and do something um, more creative um, than before. Because if, if we, if we never had people break the rules, we would never fly. We would mm -hmm. never go to space. We would never cross the oceans. We, we wouldn't do a lot of things if, you know, we always followed the rules. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying go out there and slap nobody or do right. nothing <laughs> Within crazy. reason, right? Like, yeah, you know, there, there's still societal norms that I think that we need to uh, maintain and uphold. But you know, but other than that, we we need to, um, you know, get out of the box uh, when you, you're thinking or whenever you're trying to start something or create something or want to move in a different direction. Um, and then the second thing that goes along with the first uh, point that I was talking about, and it's a book titled Mastery. Mastery. And, yeah. And it, 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 it reminded me that, um, you know, it, it takes 10, about 10,000 hours to become an expert. Mm. So the, depending on how much time you put into it, I mean, you could be a master in two to three years. Wow. You can be a master in 10 to 20 years. It, it just depends on... Um, how many, how much time? If you only put an hour a day into your craft, then that, that is, you're only going to get there, what, 10, in what, 10,000 days. Mm. You see, versus if you, if you put two hours a day or three hours a day into your craft, then you'll get there a little bit quicker than somebody that is putting an hour a day. Less. Yeah, yeah, but th th and that's why you can't really look at people's journey because you don't really see what's behind the journey. Mm -hmm. How much time, how much energy, how much um, effort they put into mastering that task, mastering that skill, or you know, mastering whatever it is that's right there in front of them. And so, you know, I use it for me as a reminder that, you know, you. The, again, consistency, mm. you know, consistency with, you know, who you are, what do you want to be, whether you want to be a creative artist or a, a billionaire or, you know, you just want to be a good home cook uh, for your family and stuff like that. In order for you to get good, you got to you got to master cooking, you know, you got to get in there every day and cook or Absolutely. you'll never... You know, or you'll never master it. So, um, I think that those those are the two books that um, all that I always fall back on, and um, that I always you know keep in my mind or in the back of my mind. I love that, and it it makes me think when you talk about mastery and how many hours it takes to become an expert. And I think the the most difficult thing for people. Um, in any area of their life, if it's health, if it's fitness, if it's finance, in any area of their lives, it's getting started, right? Just beginning. Yes. And that's yes. sometimes that's the hardest part because once you, and I, and I wrote this in my book, uh, a journey of a thousand miles start with one step. So I would encourage mm -hmm. anyone that's listening to us today, like Kenrich said, like his journey has been years for him to get to where he is now living his best life with the beach view right and so mm -hmm. and the same here with me as well like this this is not a get quick 
rich type of strategy that we're sharing with you guys. What we're sharing with you is that, you know, it's important to believe in yourself, set a goal, be consistent, and then commit to it and then making it happen. And one of the biggest steps that you can take is setting your mindset, setting your intentions, and then taking that first step, whether it's starting a business, whether it's taking that first solo trip, whether it's saving your first thousand dollars, whatever that goal may be, take that first step. Before I let you go, I want to ask you, because I know you've <laughs> been to 40 something countries, right? I love that. What's your favorite country that you've traveled to? Well, I, I don't One of your like favorites. Give, I know it's hard to yeah, say. <laughs> I know. I, I don't like to give out my favorite yet because I know that I haven't traveled the whole world yet. Yet. <laughs> yet and I love to keep throwing that yet out there. Thus but far. I, I, I have to say Ghana. Um, oh, my God. That's so crazy <laughs> you said that. That's my favorite, too. Yes, yes, yes. Aquaba. <laughs> Yes. Now, when you was in Ghana, where did you stay? Where I uh, okay. So I was. Uh, I stayed in Accra. I uh -huh. also went into the Kumasi region, uh, uh -huh. as well as Cape Co on the Cape. Is it Cape Coast? Gold Coast? Uh, Cape Gold Coast. Coast. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So I stayed all the. I also visited Benin and Togo, but those uh -huh. were all the areas that I stayed in. And listen, I didn't want to leave. I was so, like. I, I, I was the same way. I stayed in Accra and I stayed in Axiom um, while I was there, which is on the uh, coast. And it, it honestly felt like home. If anybody's listening to this, I would suggest a visit because literally, honestly, as you look into everybody's faces and just the attitudes, the mannerisms, um, everything, it, it was us. It was our cousins. It yes. was literally our cousin yeah. over there. You, if you want to see people like you, I, I recommend going to Ghana, just spending a little time, um, getting to know the people, getting to know the food, getting to know the culture. Oh, my God, the food. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, Woo! Hallelujah. I, I have this picture that I always share about Ghana where we were – we were sitting there playing. Um, they call it something else, but it, it's essentially checkers. Okay. Um, that we, we were sitting out there playing. I, w I was with my driver um, and, um, and the community. They, um, it was a nice, beautiful, clear day along the beach. Um, and we had, what, what did we have? Uh, no, we were just sitting there relaxing. Somebody came out with some fish soup and some fufu. Oof. And yes. uh, it, now, <laughs> that food now was I, I know I love spice. This was spicy. Yeah. This was like oh <laughs> fire spice. <laughs> Guyanian food is very <laughs> spicy. Yes, and it's not just hot. It's like the seasonings too. Like it's it's hot and mm -hmm. and spice, but also in flavor too. It's oh it's so it's so good. So good. Exactly. It's not like you. It's not unedible spice like you. Mm -hmm. would, a uh, ghost pepper wing or something like that. It's a very unique blend of spices that is just perfectly married together. Um, and they, they just brought it out and we all sat around, we ate, uh, right, ate right there on the beach. It, it was just such a amazing time and a, an amazing experience. And oh I would God. recommend it. That is, <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> so tell tell everyone how they can get in contact with you, um, how they can support your your small business, as well as how can they follow you and stay up to date with you on this journey to 206 countries and territories? Well, everybody can follow me on uh, at Country Boy Travels 206 on IG, on Facebook. I got um, YouTube. Also, um, I got a shop account that's linked to my IG. Um, get on there, shop, get some Country Boy swag. I love that. Stuff. <laughs> um, What's your website? Um, www.countryboytravels206.com. Oh, I love it. I'm going to put it in the comment section right now. Okay, yeah. Everything is Country Boy Travels 206. Um, you know, again, I, I do book travel. Um, so if anybody want any travel advice, I, I'm starting to just do travel advice 
Um, so if you want some travel advice, just come contact me. We'll schedule an appointment. Um, and, you know, just go out there and live your best life. I mean, this is, life's too short. Life is really, really too short um, to not be free. Oh, my God. I love that. What a great <laughs> way to end this episode of Passport <laughs> and Portfolios. I want to say thank you so much, Kenrit, for joining me on the live today. And you guys, if you love this live today, we are going to do another live tomorrow at Country Boy Travels 206 at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to have a conversation about financial freedom and how to create more time and freedom in your life. Thank you so much. Please comment like and share all the things <laughs> and feel free to contact either one of us like you said if you have any questions or you need advice about travel time money and freedom we are more than happy to help you guys with that so much so thank you guys so much for joining the live today like i always say be don't be good be great and live freely i gotta figure out how to stop it <laughs> oh gosh I think he just stopped his like regular lives. Wait, I should, you know what? Okay, does anybody have any questions? Let me see if anybody have any questions while we're both here, still live, before I end. I'm just going to go through the comment section and see if I have any questions from anyone about freedom, about travel, about money. Let's uh, see, just, hi, Lord Christy. Thank you so much for joining the live today. All righty. I'm just going down. All right, so there's not any questions here, but feel free in the replay to ask any questions you may have in the comment section and to also answer the question, are you free and what freedom means to you? All right, Cameron, I will see you tomorrow at noon. All right, see you tomorrow. Enjoy your day. You too. Bye.